I had written a poem about Edward. I just couldn't help myself. Oh, you dud, with your skin so white. Your eyes like amber, out of sight. Pale angels in my eyes. Hair like gold, rosy sunrise. I hated myself for doing it. But I couldn't get him out of my mind, and it was the only way I could deal with my feelings. Suddenly, my mind went black, and I fell into a trance. A tall, pale man stood in front of me, all ghostly and misty, like he was only half there. My daughter! My daughter! Who are you? I am your father. I am Caius from the Faltery. You are in terror and peril. My daughter, beware the vampire boy called Edward. Why? You mustn't let him sex you, or the curse you your mother tried to protect you from will fall on you. You'll become a vampire, and you will never be safe. Only as a human can you be safe from them. And he faded, and I was awake, and Uncle Larry was standing at my door. Take off your clothes now, you mouldy slut. No, I won't, I screamed, but Uncle Larry hit me. I was strong from my size, but he was a huge fat man, like 300 pounds in weight, and stronger than me. He took my clothes off, and I knew he was going to rape me again. But at that moment, someone came running into the room, and hit Uncle Larry across the head, and knocked him out cold. And I looked up at... Edward. OMG, my sweet lady. What has this frightful asshole been doing to me? He's been raping me and hitting me. I put my clothes on. Edward looked away, wail. I got dressed, so he wasn't perving on me. I looked down at the poem I had written. For truth, these are the most beautiful words I'd ever seen. It makes me feel so very moved. I wish I wasn't promised to someone else, and then I could write poems for thee. Why are you promised to Bella anyways? Because I made a promise, and I can't break it. It would be rude and ungentlemanly. Bella never used to be like she is now. She has changed, and so have her friends. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. We left the house and went to walk in the woods. We talked about loads of things, and it turned out we had a lot in common. We liked all the same music and movies and books and stuff. It was like magic. I am falling in love with Val, and it is such a darn mess. You're falling in love with me? OMG, forget I said that. He looked really embarrassed, and it was so cute. He had a big erection too. We couldn't control ourselves anymore, and we both got naked and made love. It was amazing and lasted hours. But after a while, Edward started to freak out and cry. I have been such a fool. I should not have let that happen. I must return to Bella. She always used to say that she'd kill herself if I left her. I could not be responsible for her death. And he ran away. I could not believe it. I was so shocked and angry, I could not even cry or scream. I started to feel different, like relay different. I suddenly remembered what my father had said to me about not making sex with Edward, or he would turn me into a vampire. My skin was getting all hard and pale, and my eyes could suddenly see a whole lot clearer than before. I even wanted to drink blood. I could smell a human coming closer. He was almost there. There you are, you horrid slug. Where have you been? I'm going to rape you now. Suddenly, something in me snapped. I jumped at him and broke his neck and drank his blood. I had always been strong for my size, but now I was super strong. He looked so surprised and it was so good. Soon I dropped him on the floor and he was dead. I woke up sheepishly and wondered where I was for a minute. I got out of bed. Wondering of all the things that happened to me last night were just a dream. I went downstairs for breakfast and sat down with Dave and Marie. Wow, Tia, I love your new hair and contact lenses. You look so beautiful. I got up and looked in the mirror. Holy shite, I would look totally different. For the first time I could see my face was truly beautiful. My eyes were a weird silver colour like wet pools and noble moonlight in distant meadows. My nose was small and dashing and my cheeks were high and pale and my chin was soft but majestic. Suddenly the phone rang and nuked me out of my silent staring. Dave answered it. What? Oh my god, you're kidding? 
This is inconsiderable. Uncle Larry is dead. It looked like he was ripped apart by a wild beast. I feel so sad. He was my brother. I suddenly remembered what I'd done. And I screamed and ran to school. I knew Uncle Larry was a perv and a racist. And even though he raped me and tied me up and spanked me and made my life hell, I still shouldn't have killed him. I was going to explode with guilt. I ran through the forest towards the school. But suddenly a huge thing appeared in front of me. It was a bear. A huge panda bear. WTF, I screamed. I'm a panda bear. <laughs> I was totally confused. Since when did panda bears live in forks? And since when did they speak? My name is Snufflanti Tatuna, but you can call me Snuffles. <laughs> Are you talking panda bear? I cannot talk like humans can. But you're not human anymore, so you can understand me. You can talk to animals. You probably have other powers too. You just don't know it yet. Like what? I don't know. Touch that tree. I touched a tree and concentrated hard. The tree started to bloom huge bunches of flowers. The flowers were so beautiful they made me think of Edward. Then I remembered how he left me after we had made love. And I became angry. I touched another tree and it burst into flames. It seems as if the tree turned to things that somehow reflected how I, I was feeling. OMG! How is this possible? Don't ask me, I'm a panda, lol. I have to go to school now, so I'll see you later, Snobbles, okay? That's cool, I'll see you later. I ran away and was totally weirded out by my meeting with Snuffles. I was almost in a trance at school, and even though people stared at me and made comments about my new appearance, I had never cared less. In gym class, I ran around dressed in my gym clothes. Lauren came over to me. WTF, you freaky goth Tudor bitch. You're so pale and delicate, it's freaking everyone out, and we all hate you. I was so mad, I pushed her. But when my hands touched her eyes, her skin stopped started to blister and froth in a totally gross way and she got struck by a bolt of lightning. She wasn't dead or anything but she looked totally disgusting and she got taken to the hospital. After gym class I sat in the changing rooms after everyone has left as I felt so sorry for what I had done to Uncle Larry and to Lauren. Suddenly I heard voices from behind me. Tear! Tear! It is I, Edward Cullen! What is wrong with thee? My face is even more sacred and filled with a shining glory than before. I killed someone in the old dad. I killed my uncle and drank his blood. I think I made Lauren get struck by lightning. It's okay, Tia. He was evil and no one cares about Lauren. Still, what I did was awful. And anyways, I am forgiven to you for what happened last night. We did sex and you left me there in the forest. I am sorry. I cannot stay away from thee. And yet, I cannot be with thee either. This is a serious thing. Either stay here with me now and screw me and be with me forever, or leave and go and be with Bella. Make your choice right now. I choose thee, Alanti Tiana. Do you mean it, Edward? You'll be mine forever? I does. I took off my dress, so I was only wearing my underwear, and I had some handcuffs on the bed, and I tied them to a hook. He was unable to move and I took his pants down and looked at his flopping lavender man fruit thing. <laughs> it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen and I put it in my mouth and sucked it and he thrusted madly until he had an orgasm in my mouth. It was magical. Suddenly a voice came from behind me. What do you think you're doing you evil rodent people? I hate you. I hate you both and now I'm going to kill myself. It was Bella Swan. I sat alone in the changes room. I was almost naked and looked awesome with my exotic lively hair falling over my face like a cut of soft yellow cream with bits of purple in it. But I didn't care how beautiful or exquisite I was anymore. Edward was gone. He had left to follow Bella to stop her from killing herself. I was pissed and the tears were falling down on my face like a tepid summer rain of misery and woe. So I went home and skipped school and sat in my room. Dave came in and made a big smiley face. Hey dear! I didn't know you were home. How was school today? It sucks. My life sucks and I want to die. You teenagers and your problems, lol. He said laughing a lot. Dave, you're a good person, but you're so fucking dumb, you asshole. I shouted at him and I threw my ashtray at his head without touching it. I could make stuff move when I was angry now. It's so nice having you here, Tiana. You're so pretty. I swear you're even prettier than before. And I think your boobs have grown. Yeah, I know. They're like an E-cup now. Dave smiled and patted me on the head and left. 
I was so sick of being treated like a kid and no one listening to me that I went out to the local nightclub which is called Pablo Nightmare. It was a goth club where all the cool people went and fought. Bella point even never even heard of it, lol. I met Snuffles along the way and he came with me. We went to the club and got drinks and started dancing to the heavy metal music. People stared at us because I was so different looking and Snuffles was a panda. <laughs> we didn't care, we were having so much fun. We were so drunk and taking a lot of drugs. So my head was fuzzy and like there was snow everywhere. Hey, you're called Tiana, aren't you? I am Jasper and I go to your school, said Jasper Carlin, who is tall with, with blonde curly hair, like straw, only soft and nice and not dry. He was tall. Hey, whatever, I said. Are you with that girl I always see you with? You mean my GF Alice? He looked suddenly very sad. What's wrong, Jasper? The poem is, I don't love her like she loves me. I am gay, and that's wrong. I feel so horrible about it. There's nothing bad about being gay, you know. Really? Yeah, it's proper normal, and Snuffles is gay at everything. We all started dancing together, and Jasper gave us some of his drugs. We had a really good time together, and Jasper met another gay guy called Vince, and we all got in Snuffles' car at the end of the night, and I drove around while the others all had sex in the back of the car. I was drunk because I was a vampire, it was okay to drive. Suddenly, something jumped into the road in front of us and I had to stop the car and get out. There was a man standing in the middle of the road. He was tall and muscly and had black hair like the black feathers of a raven in the black darkness. He was good looking but he looked so angry. I got out my samurai sword. I often have it with me. Someone jammed up behind me and tore it from me. There were like ten people all growing my body in the darkness. Jasper, Snuffles and Finns. We were too busy doing gay sex on each other to notice. It was so cute, but now was so not the time. Something hit me over the head, and I was unconscious. When I awoken, a tall muscle man was in front of me. I was stripped down to my underwear. Who are you, you wanky perv? My name is Jacob, the werewolf king. You look so mad and crazy. No! You must be punished for what you did to Bella Swan. You are a half-bred. You should never have been born. Your father was a vampire and your mother was a witch. It's so weird and wrong. And now you've broken Bella's heart. Half-bred! 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 The dude was insane. He was so angry. He was jumping up and down. What do you mean my mom was a witch? My father used to know her. She lived here in La Push and she was a witch. She could make fire come from nowhere and control the weather and talk to animals and loads of other stuff. She was a freak like you. Of course, it made sense now. I was so shocked I fainted. When I woke up, Jacob was in front of me and he was naked. He was smiling in a proper creepy way and looked totally weird like a greasy frog thing. And his male genital item was not nice like Edward's. It was a horrible wet mushroom. Suddenly, before he could come any closer, the door of the room... We were in, burst open. It was Eodard!